Welcome to the Vertical Form ICF instructional video. Over the course of the next 30 minutes, we will take you through a step-by-step -step process on how to assemble a project using our Vertical Form system. If you have any questions after viewing, or need additional help, please do not hesitate to contact us. Our information will be at the end of the video. Pictured here are all the parts to the Vertical Form ICF system. This diagram shows where all the parts are used in vertical form. This component is called C-channel. These are used at both the bottom and top of the wall forms to keep the wall positioned on the footer or slab and help keep the wall straight. The poly panels and studs fit inside the C-channel. The C-channel at the bottom outside the wall gets lined up with the exterior perimeter chalk lines and is fastened down to the concrete with short concrete nails or pins. An easier option for fastening the C-channels is a powder actuated nailer or one of the CO2 nail guns that the steel stud people use to nail down their track. One of the brand names is called Fast Track. Hilti also makes a nice gun for the same purpose. This is what the inside corner looks like when coupled together with the studs. This whole assembly will get stood up and put into place as one piece later on in the video. The stud rails are made from recycled plastic. Studs are what hold the poly panels in place. They come in three different concrete wall cavity widths of 6 inches, 8 inches, or 10 inches. They come in stock heights of 4 foot, 8 foot, and 9 foot, but any height can be custom ordered. There is a definite top and bottom to the studs. The half round notches need to always face up. These notches are cradles to hold rebar. The small round holes are for pushing nails into the poly panels when needed. The humps with the square holes are the backstops for the lateral ties, as shown in the picture. The 8 inch wide by 2 inch thick poly panels need to be cut from 4 by 8 sheets of 25 psi rated extruded polystyrene. Extruded polystyrene is colored either blue, which is a Dow product, pink, which is an Owens Corning product, or green, which is a Pactiv product. How you identify 25 PSI and 15 PSI can be confusing. So make sure you ask a knowledgeable person where you are buying the product. They should be able to prove to you what PSI rated poly you are buying. Here is how you can tell. The pink sheets are identified with writing on the poly that says either Formular 150 or Formular 250. The 150 stands for 15 PSI and 250 stands for 25 PSI. Blue Dow Foam, on the other hand, is more complicated. Their 15 PSI is usually stamped in small numbers and letters on the face, but not always. Their 15 PSI poly is called Utility Fit. Their 25 PSI poly sheets are called Square Edge, and seldom have 25 PSI stamped on them. All the green packed of product is 25 PSI rated. They do not make a 15 PSI rated material like Dow and Owens Corning. The 15 PSI rated poly is too weak and will bulge and may even break when filling with concrete. Also be careful of using scored polystyrene sheets. It is best if you purchase non-scored poly, but if only scored 25 PSI poly is available, you have to make sure that when you are ripping 8 inch wide panels out of the sheet that the 8 inch rips land on the scores. Do not use panels that have a factory score somewhere in the panel. It will break when put under concrete pressure. The outside corner extrusion holds one side of a corner poly panel on each side of the corner. The very outside of the corner extrusion has a molded area that needs to be filled with a 2 inch by 2 inch piece of poly after the corner is built and the adjustable lateral ties are connected. 
There are two notches in the outside corner for receiving the adjustable lateral ties. The adjustable lateral ties connect the first stud to the corner, pinching the corner poly panel in between. There are two different types of lateral ties. There is the standard lateral tie, which is shown at the top in the picture, and the adjustable lateral tie shown at the bottom. The standard lateral tie is used on all the normal 8 inch on center spaced poly panels and studs. They hold the studs exactly 8 inches on center and also hold the poly panels from falling inward. You can see the three notches on the bottom of the tie. This is where three stud rail cross ties will fit. One standard lateral tie covers two poly panels. There is a total of four rows of lateral ties, one pair closer to the top of the wall and one pair closer to the bottom of the wall. Ideally they are located at third points in the wall height. They are set at the same height as the adjustable lateral ties that are held at the corner at predetermined notches in the corner post. The adjustable lateral ties are used in the corner assembly to tie the corner to the first stud rail. The adjustable ties are needed to accommodate the different corner poly panel widths for different thickness concrete walls. The adjustable tie grabs the first stud, goes through a hole in the corner extrusion, and is bent back around the exterior corner. Now that you are familiar with all the individual components, we can move on to video of all the parts being assembled together. Assembling an inside corner post with studs. The inside corner extrusion is designed to hold two plastic studs tightly together on the inside of a corner. Find a flat surface to work from. In this video the contractor is using a door buck that is laid down on its side. Insert a stud on each side of the corner post and tap them into place with a hammer. This is what the inside corner looks like when assembled. Building a corner. Start by placing an exterior corner post into the C-channel that has been attached to the footing. This is the correct position of the corner post in relation to the C-channel. Then add the special cut corner panels to each side. These panels change in dimension with different wall thicknesses. For example, a 6 inch thick wall, which is being built here, will need an 8 and 5 8 inch wide corner panel. An 8 inch thick wall would require a 10 and 5 8 inch wide panel and a 10 inch wall would require a 12 and 5 8 inch wide panel. Pin the poly panels to the corner post with 8 penny nails through the small holes in the corner post. Use a small sheet metal screw to attach the corner post to the C-channel. Place the inside corner assembly that you assembled earlier into position. The stud face will go on the outside of the poly as shown here. Pin the studs to the corner poly panels by inserting an 8 penny nail through one of the small holes in the plastic stud. This will temporarily hold the inside corner in place. Slide an adjustable lateral tie through the slot provided in the corner post. This is what it looks like from the inside. The adjustable lateral tie hooks onto the cross ties on the plastic stud. Pull everything together tightly and bend the tie around the corner to hold everything in place. Screw the adjustable lateral tie to the corner post with a flathead sheet metal screw. Do this on every corner post slot. Building wall. Insert an exterior poly panel into the bottom C channel and up against the corner. Then insert a plastic stud against the poly. Temporarily hold the panel in place by pinning the stud to the poly with an 8 penny nail. Install lateral ties to lock the studs together and hold the poly panel in place. Connect the corner lateral tie and the standard lateral tie together with a sheet metal screw. 
There are small holes in each part that line up with one another for easy fastening. Continue building exterior poly panels and rails out a couple feet on one side of the corner. Slide the corner rebar into position. Insert the lateral ties on the inside to keep the rails positioned 8 inches apart. Now you can tie the corner rebar to the plastic studs. On a 6 inch wide wall the reinforcing bars are always positioned at the center of the wall, which is why there is only one rebar cradle on these studs. The thicker concrete wall widths will have studs with three rebar positioning cradles. Next, slide the inside C-channel into position and screw attach the channel to the corner post. Now continue building wall away from the short corner. If a vertical stub rebar is in the way, bend it slightly and feed the stud past it. On this side of the corner you will also need to raise the corner rebar and slide the stud underneath. Insert the lateral ties and screw attach them to the corner adjustable tie. Install the inside lateral ties to keep the wall more stable and also everything positioned properly. Repeat this method and build walls out approximately 8 feet in each direction from the corner. Prop up plastic studs as temporary wind bracing. From the top, Slide down a 2 inch by 2 inch piece of poly into the exterior corner cavity. Corner Bracing Stand up a pre-made 2 by 6 corner brace against the outside corner. Screw the bottom of the corner post through the C-channel and into the corner extrusion on both sides. Now screw the corner brace to the plastic extrusion about halfway up on each side. Screw attach a 2x4 angle kicker to the corner post, approximately 1 foot down from the top of the wall on both sides of the corner. Screw attach a 2x4 base plate that is long enough to extend out past the angle kicker. Screw through the 2x4, through the bottom channel, and into each plastic stud all the way out to the angle kicker. Do this on both sides of the corner. If the wall is not built out far enough, you can screw the base plate 2x4 to the bottom channel temporarily until the wall is built out farther. In this case you will have to remove the temporary screws and replace them with new screws that go into the plastic studs. While one person holds the level in the corner plumb, a second person will screw the angled kicker to the base plate. Next attach horizontal 2x4s to the wall at third points on the height of the wall. Slide the 2x4s down behind the angled kicker and attach to each plastic stud, starting from the corner all the way past the angle kicker and to the end of the 2x4. The angle kicker gets screwed to the horizontal braces where they intersect. The horizontal braces need to be attached to the corner post with lap boards that are at least 16 inches long. Always remember to use two screws at every connection. Building around a window buck. When you get to a window opening, you will need to build underneath the window first. The plastic rails should be pre-cut approximately one half inch shorter than where the bottom of the window buck will eventually be. The poly panels should be rough pre-cut at least one inch higher than the finish cut. In this example, the eight foot poly panels were cut in half and there was an extra three inches that was cut off later. The shorter rails and extra poly height will allow to adjust for unevenness in the footing or slab. After building across the bottom of the window area, level and mark the bottom of the window buck. 
Then use a handsaw to finish cut the poly panels to exact height. You can now see why the rail should be one half inch shorter. This allows room for cutting the poly. Installing inner poly panels. Now we are going to install the inside poly panels. Put one side of the panel in place and simply twist the stud enough to pop the other side of the poly panel in. The panels will fit between the face of the stud and the lateral ties. The panels are then slid down into the bottom C-channel. Be certain that the panels are all the way to the bottom of the C-channels. Notice that we already inserted the horizontal rebar between the corner and the window. The horizontal rebar that will be needed above and below the window can be slid into place later when we have more wall built. The higher you start inserting the poly panel, the easier it is to twist open the stud rail. This is going to be the last full height panel that is installed before we start installing the panels below the window. Just like the poly panels below the window on the outside, you want to have poly panels on the inside that are at least one inch taller than the finished cut height for the bottom of the window buck. This will allow some leeway in case there is a dip in the footing or slab. After the panels are in place, make sure everything is good and snug and standing up plumb and that the panels are tight to the bottom of the C-channel. Then measure off the floor and mark the height of the bottom of the window buck. With the aid of another person, make a level mark all the way across the opening. Use a handsaw to cut off the excess poly. A common mistake here is cutting off the poly panels out of level. Inexperienced people may have the saw angling down or up across the panel instead of flat. They may also try to cut too fast. Take your time when cutting, give the saw teeth a chance to cut and clear the debris, and don't try to force the saw through too fast. More strokes and less pressure works best when cutting poly. Make sure you cut the poly panels nice and flat. Now you can transfer the window width location marks up from the footer to the top of the panels. Notice the distance between the edge of the window mark and the last poly panel. That is going to be the size of a custom width panel that will be inserted later, after the buck is in place. Using those marks as a guide, Measure out and cut off a piece of C-channel for each side of the form. The window buck will be sitting on top of these channels. That is why having a nice flat cut on the poly is important. If the poly is not flat, the C-channel will not fit right and the window may not sit level. Set the window buck in place on top of the channels. Make sure the buck is flush with the channels and screw the buck to the channels. Measure the width of the custom poly panels needed to fill the gap between the window buck and the last stud on the far side of the buck in this picture. On the close side of the window, measure the distance from the buck to the edge of the poly. You will have to rip poly panels to fit these areas. Ripping Poly Panels A cordless saw with a rip guide works very well for ripping poly panels. A table saw can also be used, but be careful for kickback whenever cutting polystyrene on a table saw. A cordless saw is much less likely to kick back. Slide the custom cut poly panels down alongside the window Then cut them off flush with the top of the window buck. Do the same thing for the opposite side. After the splice panels are in place, you can continue building wall in the same manner as before. 
You can build one side at a time or both sides together. For this project, we built one side first for better viewing. Locate the lateral ties at the same height as they were on the other side of the window. In this case, the upper lateral ties were interrupted by the window. The lower lateral ties continued straight through the bottom of the window. The correct placement of these lateral ties is important because they need to match up with the lateral tie slots cut into the next corner. Build enough walls so you are at least 20 feet away from the corner. This will allow you to slide 20 foot lengths of rebar into the forms both above and below the window. It helps to have a slightly bent end like a ski when sliding the horizontal rebar in. The bent end will slide and bounce over the cross ties easily. Vertical rebar can be installed at any time before the interior top C-channel is installed. The horizontal rebar can sit in the cradle provided or can be tied to the vertical rebar and positioned anywhere within the forms. The tip of a tin snips works well for grabbing the bottom of the panels and getting them to start sliding upward. Now you can tie rebar wherever needed. Building Headers Cut two C-channels that stick past the top of the window two inches. Screw the channels to the window buck. Build across the top of the header in the same manner as below the window. Cut the studs so that they are shorter than the top of the wall. Make certain to have at least two cross ties at the same height on every header stud. Insert poly panels that stick up past the top of the wall. The poly panels will get cut to the height just like below the window. Install a row of lateral ties across the header to hold the poly panels from tipping inwards. The header panels will all be 8 inch wide pieces because they fit over the top of the splice pieces on each side of the window. The lateral ties will keep all studs exactly 8 inches on center. Putting up scaffolding and kickers. ICF scaffolding or 2x4 lumber kickers get attached to the forms approximately every 7 feet. Either option can be used, but ICF scaffolding is safer and easier to use. Screw the channel to the studs in five places. Start with one at the very top and space out the rest evenly down the stud. Temporarily hang the adjustable kicker off one of the steel pins so it will stay in place while you grab the scaffold plank bracket. Both the kicker and the bracket hang off the same pin. This completes the basic steps of installing vertical form. These steps should easily be applied to the rest of the structure. For further questions and information, contact us at 800-360-4634 and visit us on our web at www.tfsystem.com to download our installation manual. Thank you.